Well, if you've been following my uh, YouTube channel, you know that I have uh, quite an interest in uh, the touch control. Uh, used it for um, building panels. I'm a real proponent of the idea that uh, using, using mouse and a keyboard is not a realistic way to fly an airplane. I'm uh, certainly prejudiced by the 30 some 40 years I've been flying uh, in commercial aviation. But what I wanted to do is show you something that I, has been an idea I've had for quite some time. And I've tried to uh, implement this now that the Arduino, Arduino is available for Air Manager. Now what I did here is I made uh, a little panel, an instrument with some characteristic uh, inst uh, dials. You can see the first dial here is, uh, and these are just dummies, they're just uh, changing the numbers. Uh, really not interfacing with the simulator. I was more interested in how the interface worked. And the way this works is a touch control. Of course, you touch it, and then you can uh, change the value by rotating it around. The problem with touch control is that if you, if you somehow get outside the circle, if you don't completely go around it, uh, you can see it, it'll just kind of shimmies back and forth. So it requires a little of attention to keep the, the circle, the finger moving around. Now this I've made these quite large, as you can see from my fingers. These are very large uh, dials, but they represent the, some of the basic dials. You know, touch control is fine for punching buttons and so on, but when you start to get into some of these dials that have multiple uh, layers, it's kind of hard to, to do. Now I'll show you here. Here's a, the second one is is a is a uh, um, I didn't lock that down. It's a, a dial with a push button. So you can see if I hit the push button, it says pressed. But if I touch the dial, I can dial around and change the value there. Okay, and the next one is a, two, a stack knob like you might have on a radio or a GPS or something where you can have the bottom. And you can see that's a fairly narrow band that you have to touch in. Now I made this quite large. There's the inside the inner. You can see the inner. If I touch the outer, you can see the value down there for the outer. You know, when you're doing this in a, in a simulator, oftentimes you'll, these will be much smaller and it's very hard to get that little narrow area there between. Uh, so I find that very difficult and it requires a lot of attention. It's actually harder than flying a real airplane. Now here's one that has, has an outer. You can see the value changing. It has an inner. Oops, see, it's difficult to find sometimes, the inner. And then it has a button in the middle and you can see how that works. And finally I made a switch that has discrete positions, five discrete positions. And there again, you know, by moving your finger around you can you can do it, but it's it requires more attention than it does to fly a knob because normally, you know, you grab a knob, uh you look at you grab the correct knob and then you start to twist the knob and you can watch for example the uh, the heading bug uh, you kind of watch it or read a digital readout on the course or whatever until you have it where you, where you want it. And you don't have to look. But it, this way, if you look away, in this case, these are right next to it. But if you look away, that's, sometimes that's, that's a problem. So what I came up with using the Arduino is uh, a knob. This is a little stack knob. I got this knob from Desktop Aviators. This is very crude. But you can see uh, there's a, a dual encoder with a push button. And I have that hooked up to an Arduino here. On Arduino, I'm going to crank that up in a minute and show you how this works. So give me a second. I'm going to crank that up and add that to the uh, panel. Okay, so now we have it up. And you can see I put a little uh, an LED, simulated LED, to show that there's a connection between the Arduino and the, uh, the um, panel. The, the Arduino is this small instrument down here. It really has no graphics. It's just a code that tells it how to use the uh, how how the uh, signal uh, the wires are attached to the uh, inner knob and the, there's an outer inner knob and an outer knob. Now the way this works is, <clears throat> and this is what I have in mind. Uh, as I said, the touch control works great for pushing buttons, but let's say you wanted to change this dial. You would touch the dial. And now it highlights in, a, in a, uh, a yellow instead of blue like a normal highlight, just to give you an idea that that's been selected. Then 
if I grab the knob here and I can grab inner or outer since there's only one and you can see the values changing as I turn the knob I'll turn the uh, inner knob now the smaller knob and you can see since there's only one knob I, I programmed it so that either knob either knob could change uh, change the value now let's move on to knob number two and here again we'll touch that it's selected uh, again there's only one knob so either inner or outer will change that and then it, this one has a push button and if I push the button I'll push it with my thumb here you can see so you're simulating so so in the in the in a normal panel you would reach up and touch just touch the object the knob that you want to deal with now that's a double knob and those are the ones that are most problematic now in that case, uh, the signal from the knob for whatever knob is currently active gets the, if we use the outer, you can see there's the outer going up and down as I'm turning the outer knob. If I grab the smaller inner knob, you can see that value changing. Okay, and then the next one I made here is a, a knob with a push button and an inner and an outer knob. And there again, I'll change the outer knob first. Then I'll change the inner knob, and then I'll push the push button, and you can see that. Finally, I made a switch with five positions, and as I grab the knob, I, obviously there's only one layer, so either knob will work. You can use the inner knob, and you can see I can change the positions just discreetly with each click. So, very realistic feeling um, trying to do that. So, as you can see... Uh, we really have all the functionality we would like, just like in the real world, but uh, uh, with just a single knob replacing all the knobs that we would have in the cockpit. Now, the way I work this is um, a little bit uh, uh, of a hack, obviously. What I did was stole a uh, uh, weapons uh, data ref from, uh, that's not used on most airplanes in, uh, in X-Plane and use that to store a value to tell. So whenever an, a knob on an instrument is touched and it becomes highlighted, it tells uh, you, sends a, has a unique identifier number and that's stored in that data ref. And then uh, as the knob, as the, the uh, Lua script for this knob, when it, whenever there's a change there, it sends, uh, it sends a signal saying, you know, the outside knob went up one or the inside knob went down one or uh, the button has been pushed or released. And then, and then this instrument gets that information along with knowing which one is the active one. And then it basically just calls the function just like the same function that's used to, uh, to operate it without, uh, as we did earlier, without the uh, knob, I call, I'm calling it the knobster, without the knobster. So that's, uh, that's the basics. That's what we're looking at. What I'm going to do next is, is try to uh, convert a panel, a complete panel over to use this system. And once I have it converted, I'm going to have some of my pilot friends, uh, real life pilots um, and uh, people that live in the area and let them try a, the touch screen uh, to fly the air, airplane with the touch screen and then with uh, the knob and see uh, what kind of feedback I get, and if it's worthwhile, it might be something worth pursuing, uh, trying to get in, in implemented as a feature in uh, in Air Manager, uh, just like you have touch control and um, uh, mouse control. We could also have a, a, a checkbox or something to turn this function on so that dials, uh, if the knob was present, and that's the beauty of this, if the knob is present, this functionality works. If it's not, uh, the normal proceed, the normal touch control uh, or mouse control will work. So, anyway, that's where I am. I'm. Uh, if you haven't tried the Arduino on Air Manager, I got to tell you, it is extremely easy. I know nothing about this. I have done very little uh, soldering in my life and very little with uh, uh, dealing with Arduino. But these little boards cost about ten dollars. Um, encoders, you know, you can spend a little money on those. And then uh, button switches, whatever. It, it, the scripts are written, and, and you can see, uh, I'll show you uh, 
over here if I can find my mouse uh, there we go um, if you go to the devices tab you can see it says Arduino and if I click on the Arduino it tells me that the Arduino is channel A and its state is connected now the cool thing is uh, to uh, install the software in the Arduino you don't really have to know anything you take the Arduino you plug it in it powered, pow is powered by the USB and then you run the uh, installer script that uh, is on the Sim Innovations website and it just uh, installs that sucker right on there and then, then it's ready to interface with any scripts that have hardware calls you know hardware, hardware dial add hardware button add and it's just like the way you program it uh, for on screen except uh, using the hardware so uh, it really looks like it's going to be a super easy way uh, obviously I was able to do this in uh, about an hour so I think uh, building this stuff is going to be kind of exciting uh, and the being able to display the instruments using uh, the uh, great capabilities that Air Manager had and then adding in the uh, capabilities of uh, Arduino and Raspberry Pi and uh, those are kind of neat so anyway that's where I am take a look I'll be uh, I'll try to do another video when I get uh, a panel full panel converted over and try this out and see how uh, what kind of feedback we get thanks for watching take care